Leslie Rule. My mother was true crime author Ann Rule, and she wrote about three dozen books on true crime. Thank you. I won't make you do all the rest. Okay. Ann Rule is the grand dame of true crime. Like her fictional counterpart, Jessica Fletcher, on Murder, She Wrote, Anne Rule is a best-selling crime writer this court is now in session. who sometimes gets involved in the subject she writes about, real-life killers. Anne Rule died in uh, 2015, but we spoke with her in 2010 about this case and the book she wrote on this case called Small Sacrifices. It was the story that changed my life. Several parts of Diane Dan's story made no sense at all. What mother takes her kids out late at night in the dark for a sightseeing scenic drive on an abandoned road? What mother then stops to see what a man standing there would want? People started wondering, why is the mother only shot in the arm and the children have fatal and critical injuries? She had taken the time to carefully wrap her left arm in a towel while she drove to the hospital. Would you do that as a mother? I wouldn't put a towel on my arm. I'd put it on them as a tourniquet, rip it apart. Police are immediately a little suspicious, so they come up with an idea. We ask Diane if she'd do a, a reenactment for us. We simply wanted to nail down her statements, and she was more than happy to do that. Sitting in the car is Elizabeth Diane Downs. She can be seen sitting in the car, and she's kind of primping, making sure that her hair looked the way she wanted it. Diane Downs is trying to show the investigators exactly what happens. I'm throwing the keys, OK? I'm throwing the keys. So they can understand and get the forensics right. I go like that. I got in the car, jumped in, put the keys in. I just hit my cat. Started the car and left. The car door shut itself. God. She was giddy. She laughed. She cracked jokes. I mean, she's reenacting the gruesome shootings of her three children. She doesn't seem at all upset. This is worse than okay. She'd hit her cast and made the statement, "This is worse than," and she caught herself. So we speculated, of course, what she would have said to finish that sentence. And we always thought, this is worse than when I shot myself. I can guarantee you that performance by Diane Downs made cops stand up at attention and take another look at her story. We went to Downs' apartment and conducted a search at the residence. After she gave us consent to search, we found diaries where she had written almost daily. Diane had fallen in love with a co-worker. His name was Robert Knickerbocker. Everybody called him Nick. And she fell for him big time. He was married, but he was separated from his wife, Charlene, at the time. Diane was thinking that her married lover in the post office in Chandler, Arizona, would follow her. And when I interviewed him, he said, Ann, I was just so glad when I realized she'd crossed the county line headed out of here uh, that I never considered following her. But she was desperate to get his attention. Diane is heartbroken. So the sheriff's deputies were still investigating. And in the meantime, Diane was holding court, essentially, giving interviews to reporters. I was really surprised that uh, Diane Downs and her family offered to have a news conference very early on. I am here just to appeal for people out there to, if they know anything, to call in. They said that they wanted to set the, the story right. We were just out, I guess, sightseeing, I guess you'd say. And the kids got tired. They fell asleep in the car. So I decided to just head on home. But I saw a road I hadn't been on before. We like to take back roads and just went down that road. And there was a guy standing in the road flagging me down, so I stopped. Everybody knew it, didn't ring true. Pretty much a lie. Everything she was saying was a lie. She could feel that the focus had changed from this bushy-haired stranger to her. 
If I had shot my own children, would I not have done a good job of it? Why would I have taken my kids to the hospital? Wouldn't I have made sure they were dead and then cried crocodile tears? That's insane to think that I would do such a thing and then bring the, the witnesses in against myself. That's crazy. There wasn't a camera or a reporter's notebook that she didn't chase. She gave one interview in full hair and makeup after the next, thinking that this would somehow garner sympathy for her. It had just the opposite effect. Christy woke up, and as I say, she may be the only one to get me out of this. Would I have brought her to the hospital? Wouldn't she be the one that I would make sure is dead? There are too many holes in it. Her children are still suffering. Danny is paralyzed, which she continues to tell everybody, oh, he's not paralyzed. Danny's going to walk again. I don't care if we just have to will him to walk. I think he's going to walk. The doctors all say he won't. And I know that your mind controls your body. And if I can love him enough and encourage him enough, I believe he'll walk. And Christy suffered a stroke. In my experience, if you've had a stroke of that nature, usually it's hard to recover. It was a long time before I heard her talk. Now, even though little Christy, lying there in a hospital bed, couldn't speak, the nurses noted that every time Diane Downs came into the room, her vitals spiked went off the chart when she would sense her mother was in the room. The children were never back in Diane's custody. The state of Oregon removed them and they were placed in foster care. This is an Eyewitness News special report. In her own words, Elizabeth Diane Downs. Good evening, I'm Ann Bradley. When we got to talk to her, they said she could bring her lawyer to the interview that we wanted to do. She showed up by herself and I said, Gotcha. The Ann Jager interview really helped Diane Downs dig her own grave. When this man shot my daughter, my first reaction was to snap back to my childhood, to the pain that had happened to me back then, my marriage, my entrapment by society. This man was bigger than me. He was stronger than me. He had more power because he had a gun. And I stood there and I looked at Christy reaching and the blood that just kept gushing out of her mouth. and and. What do you do? She used the word I or me so many times in that interview, you'd never know her three children have been shot. Everybody says you sure were lucky. Well, I don't feel very lucky. I couldn't tie my damn shoes for about two months. It is very painful. It is still painful. The scar is going to be there forever. I'm going to remember that night for the rest of my life, whether I want to or not. I don't think I was very lucky. I think my kids were lucky. If I had been shot the way they were, we all would have died. Her kids are lucky? A child is dead. Two children are grievously hurt. And the kids are lucky? It's extraordinary. She can work things out in her mind so that they work for her. She wrapped so many layers of lies around her that she didn't know herself anymore what was the truth. The more she talked, the better. Diane Downs had a penchant for wanting the publicity to talk. And the more she did so, the tighter the noose around her neck became.